Um, cool. Okay, so the lawsuit. Let me explain what's happened. Epic was our domain registrar for over a year. Um, Epic has a very sordid history. For a lot of its existence, I think it was even founded by a guy called Rob Monster. Um, Rob Monster made Epic a kind of free speech platform. Uh, it was the 12th largest domain registrar in the United States at its peak. It held millions of domains. And uh, it, it kind of had a reputation because the Daily Stormer and 8chan and Kiwi Farms all used it at some points. Um, but during 8chan, there was a, I can't remember specifically what the event was, but there was a certain point where Epic told them they had to get off of, of Epic. And since then, Rob Monster has been like traumatized by image boards. And he also told me when I was trying to start up 9chan that we couldn't use Epic for any image board whatsoever. So I had to move it on very short notice. I moved it to nice neck. Um, however, at a certain point, there was a huge scandal with Epic because what they had done is they had made a um, aftermarket place for trading domain names and selling domain names. And because a lot of domain names are squatted on and sold aftermarket to people interested in buying that domain, they're marked up thousands of dollars and the aftermarket retailers get like a, a percentage of that. However, because the retailers are also um, ICANN credited, that means that they can they they control the domain. So you're kind of trusting them to be a reputable country or a company that handles your domain and handles the escrow tasks that they're given. Because when basically what happens is when you buy a domain, uh, the 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 um, registrar will lock the domain from the guy who who currently has the lease from from ICANN and also the money from the guy wanting to buy it. Then the domain is transferred onto the account internally. The person gets their money. Everybody's happy. That's how an escrow works. Anybody familiar with real estate will know that a mortgage works exactly the same way, that there is an escrow that handles the, the money from the mortgage company and the, the, the title of the property from the, the seller. Um, what happens if the escrow is not trustworthy? Well, you get sued. Uh, Epic has been has been accused and found guilty in court, I believe, of stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars from people uh, in terms of both domain assets and also um, liquidity that was held in escrow. And uh, after this, the company Epic tried to oust Rob Monster because this happened under his watch. Um, and they also were hacked at some point and all their user data was leaked, which they blamed on the fact that their software was written by a unaccountable Eastern European company that they had leased out to. Uh, so all around, it was a bad, bad look for, for Epic. Then and Epic, by the way, owns a very large and uh, very like they own Terra Host as a subsidiary. And Terrahost was the company that helped us after we got kicked off of Cloudflare. We were on Terrahost for months before Liz Fong Jones went to every single one of their tier one upstreams and forced them to block our subnets. So they, they stuck their neck out for us hard. Um, and in particular, Meow, who is a, I did not know this at the time, I promise. But one of the guys that I think he's like Norwegian or some shit and worked for Terrahost, which was a subsidiary of, of Epic is a like male VTuber who's friends with Pippa Pipkins. And I had no fucking idea of this, but now I guess it kind of makes sense in retrospect why he liked the Kiwi farms and wanted to help us. Um, but he's also like the is, or was like a, an Epic like security advisor. So when Epic went fucking crazy and, um, started fucking with us people assumed that it was the vtuber who would be like a tranny or something and he has nothing to do with it uh people have found out that he like hosts lollycon on his image server like um i don't know i don't know any of that shit uh he's been nothing but professional to me but it's very disappointing to hear his takes on lollycon and shit i don't know what else to say about that um but the epic the current epic shit has nothing to do with terror host and it has nothing to do with this VTuber guy, uh, regardless of anything else. Uh, so Epic in December randomly sees the Kiwi Farms domain. Oh, I should explain uh, further. 
Um, what happened is that when Rob Monster was held accountable, he split the company. He um, put Epic Domains under Epic LLC, a mysterious Wyoming anonymously incorporated LLC. And then everything else in Epic that was profitable is now a part of something called Kingdom Ventures. And then I think Epic, the old company, was dissolved. And it was uh, when we were on Epic, it was under management of some guy called Brian Royce, who was like a hardcore libertarian. And Brian um, tolerated us and defended us on on Epic, and with um, Terra Host. I I fuck I had a I had a video call with this guy. He literally has an RPG seven in his um, suite in Las Vegas. And he he really he really stuck his neck out for us and got us onto Terra Host and made sure that Terra Host had assurances from Epic that everything was good, and then uh, the domain names and shit that was all it was so nice to have for a long time. Our domain names were set in stone. I didn't have to worry about the domain name, um, and that was all because of Brian Royce. Then the the shuffle happened, and uh, Brian Royce was somehow outmaneuvered and removed from Epic. Nobody knows who owns Epic now. That's something that they're going to have to find out in court because nobody knows who owns this company. But it does exist. It does operate. Epic Domains is still a thing. It's still accepting payments. And their media manager is like this schizophrenic retard on um, on Twitter. And I'll just show you what he's been saying. After months, after they kicked us off, um, and I went on Twitter and complained until they gave me the transfer codes... Um, the media account for Epic suddenly came back online. It, this was like a month later. Uh, as you can see, someone in December said something about me. And then Epic LLC responded to like yesterday saying, we didn't take that domain from the owner. We were forced to help the owner switch to another registrar by the U.S. authorities. I believe it is registered in Canada now. I don't know if that's true if we're registered in Canada. Let me check real quick. I don't know where we're at. Where the dot com is at. Um, maybe he means name silo or something. No, they're based in fucking Phoenix, Arizona. So that's a lie. Um, the U.S. authorities thing is like, you can't say that. If you're telling people that the, the law enforcement of the United States is compelling you to do something, that means that there is a crime being investigated and that you have a court order to do something. So I say, this is false. Send me documentation from U.S. law enforcement or retract this defamatory statement. Because it is defamation per se to call somebody a criminal when they are not a criminal. Epic replies, and this is their real account. You can go to epic.com, scroll to the bottom and click the X icon. It will take you to this account. So it's tied that way. And I have email confirmation that they are aware this person is running their social media account um, the way that they are. Um, he admits, he says, I think you caught us. It was woke liberal employees here canceling you because they didn't like the hate speech on your site. So... I um I retweet this and say do not use Epic LLC for domain registration. They had put client hold without warning on HN and the Kiwi Farms. When confronted on this, they lied and said they had received a court order to do so. When confronted on that lie, they responded with this. Epic replies to this message and says, Yeah, we're not really into the free speech. The old owners were. That's not our thing. We offer 25 cent over cost domain registrations, $999.com initially and upon renewal. Did we handle your situation badly? Yes, 100%. You had child porn on your website. We're sorry. We have no agenda. So you, that's another thing. You cannot accuse somebody of being a distributor of child pornography. That is also defamation per se. Uh, so I say, uh, tell your new owners, I will personally dedicate myself to destroying your business for this new and even more heinous lie. And uh, I don't think it responds to that until later. Um, but basically, I go out and I say, Dave lied about us twice in two instances of defamation per se. Number one, they're saying that we that we um, are subject of a court order for deplatforming, which is not true. 
and number two, that we host child pornography. So I'm considering suing them. Um, this is my message. I said that this and that they're both false. They're both instances of actual def defamation per se. Um, the damage of these claims is inherent in the claim, and they are brought, already being parroted by adversaries for the purpose of trying to further erode our ability to find stability and sure footing on the internet. So I said, would people want to donate for a lawsuit against them? And overwhelmingly, I think if I refresh this, it's even higher now. Oh, if I refresh this, the site dies because of how shit is, but... Uh, like over a thousand people said that they would chip in. Um, and I will get to that in a second. Um, but it was like over 1500 people, uh, said that they would ship in. So uh, to give you an example, by the way, uh, this is Alejandro Caraballo says the EFF went to bat for Kiwi farms last August, a site that hosts child sexual abuse material in the name of protect the stack. If they had listened to people telling them this, they would have known better. This is what blind idealism gets you. Alejandro Caraballo works for Harvard. They had been invited to uh, Congress to give testimony. And they are telling the EFF that they should not support us, despite the unprecedented deplatforming against us, citing exactly Epic LLC's tweet that we host child pornography, which is a completely false and unsubstantiated claim. Alejandro Caraballo actually goes a step further. The word child pornography is not a technical term. There are many different terms for it. But when you say child porn, it's kind of an opinionated term. A lot of people consider lollycon to be child pornography, and some people don't. Alejandro Caraballo unexplicitly or explicitly, unambiguously says child sexual abuse material. That is CSAM. Um, that is a legal term. It has a specific definition. It is defined by law and it is a crime. So if you accuse somebody of hosting CSAM, that is actually a different claim than saying that somebody hosts child pornography. So not only are Epic's claims being reiterated by people who are trying to hurt the site, they are being augmented with a different kind of lie by these same people. Um, and these claims snowball. When you have people like this saying things like this, people will then take these tweets and use them in complaints to say, look, these very important companies and people are saying that this website hosts illegal material, so therefore you shouldn't even look into it. You have the evidence right in front of you. Cloudflare says that it's a threat to human life. Uh, Harvard says that it's a, um, a child pornography website. Epic, their former host, says that we found child porn on their site. Don't even listen to them. Just get rid of the site as quickly as possible, and it works. Uh, so it's a true damage to the forum and to its sustainability to have lies like these permeated by people like Alejandro Caraballo and by Epic, who they use to justify saying things like this. Um, so Epic, after uh, hearing about this plan to sue them, said, realizes that if they want to beat a claim that we host child porn um, as a defamation issue, they nearly, merely need to find one instance of us hosting what could be considered child pornography for it to be true or true to a reasonable person. So they post at me, here is their complaint, and this is on their main timeline, by the way. Here is the complaint received that violated our terms of service for doxing. We believe this to be underage porn also. Regardless, Epic doesn't want to do business with websites like this. If we misread this, we apologize. Did we make the right choice for canceling Kiwi Farms? Uh, attaches a bunch of pictures of a, uh, African man masturbating and fingering his asshole. And, uh, I blurred these additionally to show them on stream, but they're blurred out in the original as well to conceal any and all information, which is to their benefit. Because one of those things is a passport and it says here, date of birth, August 15th, 2022. Uh, this person is a pedophile, by the way, the, uh, this guy that's in these pictures, uh, he sells child pornography on Telegram. Um, he admits that he's done so. He denies being a pedophile because he claims he's only abused children for money and that most people who abuse children only do it for money and not because they're attracted to children. This was his actual defense. It's on the forum if you want to go read it. Um, and then he uh, to try and cover this information that was on the Kiwi Farms, uh, he sent in this complaint. Here's him admitting that he sent in this complaint to Epic. Epic confirms that they actioned this complaint. Uh, so they basically fell for a pedophile tricking them to deplatform a website with no information. And then one of the other things that they censored uh, was one of the images, this one right here. 
uh, in the corner of this picture, uh, sorry, you can't see my mouse, but in the corner of that middle picture is an interesting piece of information chat. It's a timestamp. There's a watermarked timestamp on this photo and it is, um, October 10th, 2021, which would mean that when that photo was taken, he was 19 years old. I had both his passport and I have a picture with a timestamp on it. And I can use a little bit of subtraction and figure out that these things are 19 years apart. And therefore this is not CSAM. This is not child pornography. And if they had done due diligence or if they had emailed me for clarification or to give me an opportunity to respond to their claims, um, I would have been able to deduce this and reply to them. So uh, what we have here, and because they, they blurted out, I'm pretty confident they also recognized this and didn't want to put this out because uh, they knew what was happening and that they were deliberately lying. Uh, so I believe I have two cases for defamation per se against Epic LLC. One for falsely and knowingly falsely accusing us of hosting child pornography and another for falsely and knowingly falsely accusing us of uh, being the subject of a warrant that they did not receive and never forwarded to me. And so because of how egregious these claims are, I think that the most direct and most prudent option is to sue them uh, and force them to retract and maybe also pay damages. Uh, not just Epic. Um, if someone perhaps made their own completely unsubstantiated, knowingly false claims, uh, citing a specific legal definition, uh, that might also be if they were for Harvard, for instance, and they have some some uh, some clout that might also be pursued. So this is the throw that's happening on the Kiwi Farms, and the way that I'm going to look into this, and I'm I'm pretty pretty certain it's going to happen, is um, I have an attorney. He will act as escrow. If you have fiat, um, we're going to set up a website where you can charge a card. Um, if you want to send in a money order, which can be done anonymously, I will provide instructions on how to mail a money order. Any money sent to the escrow will be earmarked for litigation. Um, effectively, it will be held for the purposes of litigation under my direction. Uh, the specific legal wording will be decided later and presented uh, to people wanting to make the contribution. As far as cryptocurrency goes, um, my attorney is licensed in Vermont. He is a uh, member of the Vermont Bar, among other states. And Vermont has a specific rule that prohibits him from accepting cryptocurrency uh, for litigation. Um, it's stupid, but just know if you want to donate crypto, it will have to be a regular gift and not an earmarked escrow amount. Um, because the Vermont State Bar does not it prohibits him from accepting cryptocurrency uh, for litigation purposes. But obviously, uh, you can just send me whatever you want. And uh, I pay out of pocket for most of these legal expenses already. And yes, I'll post everything everywhere. Uh, there won't be. I have a specific domain. And tell me if I'm stupid. But basically, this would be a general purpose litigation fund. We have Greer. We have the uh, Epic issue. And then we also have my buddy Vinny in Australia and uh, potentially uh, other uh, litigation involving those parties in the United States. So it would be a very um, broad scope escrow account for our litigation war chest. And I was thinking maybe, maybe we should use a generic domain uh, for, for this. Um, and I was thinking maybe consentaccident.com because I have that domain. It's kind of parked. I don't know what to do with it. It was parked on Epic. I've moved it since. Uh, I was thinking maybe consentaccident.com, and that would just be the general litigation crowdfund page. Do you guys think that would work, or is that too snarky? What, what do you think? Give me some feedback, chat. Great name. Cool. By the way, uh, Rakeda did a 48 out minute video talking about litigation. Um, and it was so smug and condescending and like wet brained alcohol, um, alcoholic rambling. I couldn't get through it. I couldn't listen to it. It's just like the way that his intonation and the way that he speaks is so stuffed up his own ass that, um, I, I can't bear to hear him. <laughs> I just can't even stomach listening to him anymore. So I'll have to accept my uh, legal advice from practicing lawyers instead. 
normies will be able to donate anonymously through a USPS money order. I know that zoomies are zoomies, but here's how this works. Like, I'm actually shocked by how many people don't know what a money order is. I guess a lot of you don't buy, get passports or anything. Cause you have to get money orders for that. Um, but you go to your post office, you walk into your post office, your federal post office called the USPS and you can bring cash or card, but you go up to the lady and you say, I need a 10, 50, hundred thousand dollars. I think thousands, the maximum thousand dollar money order. And, uh, they will charge you that amount of money and $2 for a service fee. It'll give you a slip of paper in it. You'll have a two field. This is the only field you need to fill out for it to be, um, cashable. I don't know who you'll make it out to yet. So don't go out and do this right now. Um, it might have to go out to an attorney's name. Um, if the fund is in a trust, which I don't know why it would be, uh, you would have to make it out to the trust name. It will not be Joshua moon or the, or local LLC or whatever. Um, so just wait, st stand back and stand by, but you will fill that out. You will literally take a pen and you'll use your, you know, your writing skills. You won't be typing this. You will have to actually write on the piece of paper, the name of the, the recipient, and then you just put it in an envelope and you send it to that person. This is completely anonymous. This is between you, God, the cashier at the USPS. And if for some reason someone looked at the security cameras in the federal government for that post office, uh, then also it's not anonymous. So basically it's not anonymous to the government, but they don't care. Too much work. It is too much work for most people. That's the sad fact of our society chat. Uh, but if you don't mind me spending it on pizza, you can just super chat, man. <laughs> um, cool. Excellent. Wonderful. Uh, so that's the, the lawsuit thing. Is there any more tabs here? No. Yeah. Just shocking. It's just shockingly negligent. It's just the, like, here's, here was my takeaway from this, you know, it's that, um, they really don't see us as human beings. They don't see me as a real person. They don't see my community as a real community. They don't believe that I have rights, that I have a uh, personal reputation, that there's anything that they can say about me which is not justifiable. I'm an ontological evil to them. And they can torture me. They can uh, slander me. They can defame my what I've built. And they don't care. And I think maybe... The only option is to force them to care. And if you don't force them to respect you and you don't force them to respect your rights and your dignity, uh, they never will. So maybe we should be getting a little bit more forceful all across the board. No, you don't like me. You don't respect what I, what I think or what I believe. That's too bad. I'm going to force you to because <laughs> uh, they seem to be pretty dead set on making you like them. Uh, so I don't know. I've, I've always been a pretty pacifistic kind of guy, but I don't think that we're in pacifistic times anymore, chat. Such is life. Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice!